Hello viewers, welcome to Google TV, uh, sponsored by the e-learning teachers project Uganda. This is Obonyo Kenneth, Trinity SS Navero. I'm back for all level mathematics, and this time around we have something very fresh. Something depending on what you requested for. Most of you are asking for section B numbers, we have one. We are going to move with one along up to when we reach the final answer. But before I reach any further, uh, allow me to thank Mr. Kanyike Joseph in New York City. Thank you so much for all the water that you sent us. Thank you, for, thank you so much indeed. That water is going to help us in the project. And I will not forget Yasin rules in Dubai. Thank you too for the microphone that you sent us. It is so useful. Linda, at home there, I know you're watching. Uh, Rita Ora, I know you're watching. Nambus Rachel, I also know you're watching. Mr. Kanyike, thank you so much for the corrections that you made yesterday in all the work that we had. Tonight, we are going to be handling math. Like I've told you, they are telling us that in the figure, A, B, C, D, V. This is A, B, C, D, V is a right pyramid with a rectangular base. They want us to calculate part A, the height of the pyramid. Part B, they want us to find the angle between the slanting face and that's the slanting face VBC and its base. Then lastly, they want us to calculate the volume of the pyramid. That is okay. I know most of you have been seeing such questions. Now when you see this figure here, this is the point A, vertex A. This is vertex B, vertex C, vertex D. We are having an apex V. That is the highest point of that shape, which we call a pyramid. But we have different categories of pyramids. We can have a rectangular-based pyramid. We can have a square-based pyramid. We can have a circular-based pyramid. We can have a triangular-based pyramid, which we gave a special name, tetrahedron. Now, today we are having a rectangular-based pyramid. What do I mean when I talk about a rectangular-based pyramid? I mean it is a pyramid whose base is a rectangle. So this is a rectangular based what? Pyramid. But again, before we go any further, remember, such questions originate from a topic known as three-dimensional geometry. Three-dimensional geometry. Three-dimensional geometry. Three-dimensional geometry. Now, when I talk about three-dimensional geometry, this is a mathematical topic that deals with the shapes which are measured using three dimensions. When I talk about three dimensions, I'm looking at the length, I'm looking at the width, I'm looking at the height. Whenever you have any shape that has a length, a width, as well as a height, then that shape falls in the category of what we call three-dimensional shapes. Give me examples of three-dimensional shapes. Me, I've given you an example. A rectangular based pyramid. Uh huh. I want someone to give me an uh, example. Uh, yes, someone from a patch district is calling online, telling us, yes, that we can have a cube. Yes, a cube is a good example of another shape in three dimensional geometry. Uh huh. Another one. Someone is talking about a circle. A circle? No. A circle? No. Yes. Someone is telling us a sphere. A sphere is another example. It's another example. And very many others. But again, viewers, what you need to know is we are living in a three-dimensional world. The cameras we are using here in this studio or class are three-dimensional. They have length, they have width, they have height. Your bodies have length, they have width, they have height. Your bodies are also three-dimensional objects. The cups you use at home, the refrigerators you use at home, the calculators you use, the mathematical sets you use, your houses are built using length, width, and height. 
the cookers you use at your home, the phones, the telephones you use at your home, the bricks you use for construction, the wheelbarrows you use, the jerry cans you use, the saucepans you use. There are so many examples. There are so many examples. All of those are what we call three-dimensional shapes. Now, when we go back to our shape, this is a right pyramid. They are telling us in the figure A, B, C, D, V, it is a right pyramid. What do they mean by a right pyramid? A right pyramid is a category of pyramids that has a perpendicular height or that has a height which is standing at 90 degrees. Now you see this height here? O, V. It is at 90 degrees. Now whenever it is at 90 degrees, then this shape qualifies to be called a right pyramid. Aha. Suppose it is not a right pyramid. Suppose then it does not have a height at 90 degrees. What is it called? Can someone tell me? Someone is saying rectangle. No. I'm asking. Suppose a pyramid's height is not at 90 degrees. Then how do we call that pyramid? Someone is telling me a, telling me a bucket. Not a bucket. It is known as an oblique pyramid. An oblique pyramid. It means that that pyramid its height is slanting it is standing at a different angle other than 90 degrees now mr examiner back to the question i know you want us to solve this question we are going to solve it Haredi, i know you're watching mr mubanda Haredi, i know you're watching thank you so much for supporting and sending as many questions to this platform thank you indeed this question is specifically dedicated to you and your students. Now, they want us to find the height of the pyramid. They want us to find the length of V, which is the height. But in getting the height of V, we are going to extract, we are going to pull out, we are going to remove the shape A, B, C, which is a three-sided shape, a triangle but remember this triangle ABC has a 90 degrees at point B. Why? Because originally the base is known as a rectangle. And one of the properties of a rectangle is the angles at the vertices, the angles at the corners are each 90 degrees. Which means at this corner B, the angle here is 90 degrees. Now, when we extract out A, B, C, we are going to use what we call the Pythagoras theorem to find the length A, C. After getting the length A, C, we shall divide it into two equal parts to get the length O, C, so that we can be able to extract another three-sided shape, a triangle V, O, C whose hypotenuse is 12, and whose length OC is known. And we use Pythagoras theorem again to get length OV. So now that is what we are going to start on right now. So as we create space, as we create space to handle this section B number, it's a number in section B, like I've told you, three-dimensional Geometry, three-dimensional geometry. A very simple, very, very simple topic. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, in our solution, in our solution, like we said, they want us to find the height of the pyramid. But in finding the height of the pyramid, we are going to first extract A, B, C. So we can say, Mr. Examiner, sir, from... Triangle A, B, C. Uh -huh. What about triangle A, B, C? We are going to have our triangle A, B, C here. Uh -huh. Like this. It is at 90 degrees there. This point is the point A. This is point B. And that is point C. But the length from A to B is... 8 centimeters. The length from B to C is 
15 centimeters. Now, we are going to use Pythagoras theorem, which states that a squared plus b squared is equivalent to c squared. Good. So, we can say a squared plus b squared is equivalent to c squared. Remember, this is our a, this is our b, and that is our c squared. Now, if that is the category that we are going to look at, we are going to substitute our a is our 15 squared plus our b which is 8 squared which is equivalent to the c squared which we don't know but the c squared is length ac it is the hypotenuse of that triangle now if it is the hypotenuse of that triangle what do we do i told you previously if you don't know how to multiply these numbers please use a calculator you are encouraged to each one of you get a scientific calculator. I know we are still in quarantine, but soon the government uh, will, of course, release us so that we can be able to go and buy those calculators for those who don't have. But if you're having yours, then let's use it. 15 squared simply means a 15 times a 15. So we have a 15 times a 15 to give us a 225. So we write it here. 2 2, 5. Plus, 8 squared simply means 8 times 8, which is squared or 8 times 8 to give us a 64. So we put here a 64. We write it there, which is equivalent to a C what? A C squared. But again, we need to add a 2, 2, 5 to a 64 so that we have 2, 2, 5 plus 64 to give us 289. Uh-huh, we have our 289, which is equivalent to C squared. But remember, our interest is not to find C squared. Our interest is to find C. Our interest is to find the hypotenuse. And in finding the hypotenuse, it means that we are going to square root both sides. And in square rooting both sides, we are going to have a square root on the left-hand side and a square root on the right-hand side. Squared, the squared will cancel with the square root according to the laws of indices. Now, how do we get the square root of 289? Which two numbers do you multiply? And you get 289, the same number which is squared. So if you don't know, come and use your calculator. The square root of 289, I get a 17. I don't know what each one of you gets out there. So if it is 17, 17 is equivalent to a C. Therefore, Mr. Examiner, sir, length AC is equivalent to a 17. A 17 what? Is it kilometers? No, it is in centimeters. But if AC is 17, we said since we need to use the triangle V O C, we need to get the length O C. But again, the length O C is on the total length AC. Which means getting AC and yet point O is the midpoint of that rectangle. Then it means we are going to get the total length AC. We divide it by 2 to get the length OC. What am I trying to say? I'm saying length OC will equal to a half of length AC. That means this will equal to a half times the 17 that we just got. But a half of 17 is the same as saying 17 divided by 2, which gives us 8.5 centimeters. So, we now have the length OC. We are now going to continue by extracting VOC, which is a right-angled triangle. Why am I saying a right angle triangle V O C? Because the examiner told us that it is a right pyramid, and we defined and said any pyramid which is known as a right pyramid is that pyramid whose perpendicular height or whose height is standing at 90 degrees. So it qualifies it to be at 90 degrees. So, viewers, without wasting time, let us take some little water. And then we come back and continue.
Yes, viewers, welcome back from that short break. Uh, like I told you, we are joining hands to kick coronavirus out of Uganda. Don't think about anything else. Just follow the guidelines from the Ministry of Health plus the government of Uganda. Keep at home, social distancing, wash your hands with, a, you can use a sanitizer or with the soap, and make sure you at least wash for a minimum of 20 seconds. And besides that, keep home, watch these programs, make notes, do the assignments, and communicate with your teachers. Don't move from one house to another. Keep in your houses. Nakate Farida, thank you so much for the support. Mr. Mubanda, like I said, this topic is yours. And besides that, Fox Henry in Arua, Thank you for the support of all the questions that you sent. Now, viewers, we are looking at this three-dimensional figure. They want us to find the height of the pyramid. But we said in finding the height of the pyramid, we now need to move ahead and extract the triangle V, O, C. So, Mr. Examiner, sir, from triangle V, O, C. What is triangle VOC telling us? What does it look like? This is how it looks like. We are having our triangle like this. And we are having V, O, and then a C. But the length V, O, we don't know it. It's what the examiner wants to find. So we don't know this length. How about length OC? Remember, we got length OC as 8.5 centimeters so we have it substituted here 8.5 centimeters do we know length vc do we know length vc yes and try someone from soroti district someone from pader or from wakiso someone is telling us length vc is six centimeters no it's not vc is not six centimeters who can see the answer come on Oh, yeah, very, very good. VC is 12 centimeters. It is the slanting length. It is that length which is not at 90 degrees. Like you can see, it is slanting. VC is 12 centimeters. We come and write it there. Now, if it is 12 centimeters, remember at point O, it is still 90 degrees. And I already explained to you why it is 90 degrees. It originates from... The word right pyramid implying that its height is at 90 degrees. If the pyramid is not at 90 degrees, then it's known as an oblique pyramid. I've already explained to you that. Those who have just joined us, this is still Obonyo Kenneth on Google the TV, sponsored by the e-learning teachers project, you and Trinity SS now. Now, we are looking for the perpendicular height VO, or you can call it OV. Examiner, sir we know is still using a squared plus b squared equaling to c squared which is our pythagoras theorem you're free to say v o squared plus o c into c v squared it is very okay now we can actually even use that we can say v o squared plus o c squared equaling to c v length cv squared but do we know length vo we don't know so we leave it the way it is length vo squared plus do we know length oc 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 everyone not the police officers oc length oc it is 8.5 centimeters which are squared uh -huh. which is equivalent to cv CV, not the curriculum of Vita, <laughs> not, not that one. We are looking at length CV, which is also 12. 12 what? Squared. Like I told you, if you don't know how to multiply appropriately, or if you are not sure, then please go ahead and use a calculator. No one will arrest you. They will arrest you for moving after 7 p.m., but no one will arrest you for using a calculator in solving this number. So, Mr. Examiner, sir, VO squared plus, but 8.5 squared is 8.5 times 8.5, which gives us 72.25. So, we have plus 72.25, which is equivalent to 12 squared. 
which is a 12 times a 12 to give us a what? A 144. Wonderful. A 144. But Mr. Examiner, sir, our interest is to make VO the subject of the formula. It is to leave it alone on the left-hand side. But in leaving it alone on the left-hand side, there is a 72.25 which we don't need on the left-hand side. We need it to move to the right-hand side. But since it is a positive, when it crosses the right-hand side, it becomes a what? A negative. Wonderful. So, Mr. Examiner, sir, VO squared will equal to the 144 that was there. And then the negative 72. 0.25. Remember, it has crossed the right-hand side. So now we are having 144 minus 72.25, which will leave us with 71.75. Uh -huh. This will equal to 71.75. Now, our interest is to make VO the subject of the formula. It should not have the squared, which means we are going to both sides uh -huh. so that our length VO will equal to the square root of 71.75 but according to the laws of indices one of them states that a square root of any number is either positive or a negative but remember what I told you in the previous lesson length cannot be measured in negatives so much as we are going to get two answers here a positive and a negative answer we shall only use the positive answer because in length we don't use negatives wonderful it's good you still remember so mr examiner sir length vo will equal to uh -huh, the square root of 71.75 that is the square root of 71.75 to give us uh -huh, mine is giving me 8.47 so i will have my eight 0.47 what centimeters this is my what my v o this is my v o but what was the question from the examiner the examiner was saying please go ahead without changing the question and calculate the height of the pyramid incidentally the height of the pyramid is the o v o you can say it is v o and that's what got so we can conclude by saying, Mr. Examiner, sir, hence height, height of, of what? Not the height of Obonyo, height of the pyramid. Height of the pyramid, height of the pyramid is equivalent to 8.47 what? Centimeters. As simple as as simple as that nothing much let us go and sanitize our hands and then we shall be back with the part b of question number one section B.